All right, welcome to chapter two, uh, tutorial four, the frame buffer tutorial. So we're going to see how to now go get our back buffer, basically our frame buffer from the from the swap chain, and uh, and uh, basically put a fill a color, fill the screen with a color, uh, because you want to do that every frame anyway. You want to clear it for what was there from the previous screen most of the time so <clears throat> so let's do this so first of all I'm going to organize those color a little bit so I'm going to this initialization I'm going to put that in a different call so let's create two two new private function all right so let's call the first one create device all right uh, and we're going to need the window and the other one is going to be create render target. And that's going to create our render target view that we're going then to uh, use to change the color or something. All right, so <coughs> device stuff, let's put some comments here. Render target, all right, and you want to, you will want to old, get an old on that uh, render target, so it's going to be interface direct 3d 11 render target view so what this is this is basically uh, a texture well it is a texture all right so you all know what what is a texture you've worked with textures in OpenGL or unity and this is a texture basically uh, that you can render to right so I can give you an example so let's say you have a game uh, and let's say it's a golden eye and <clears throat> there's a camera there's a t you, you you go in the security station and there's a bunch of tvs and those tvs actually show other parts of the levels so this way can be done is well those part of levels you actually render them to a texture and then you use that texture to put on the tv right so so that that's how it's done and it's called a uh, render target view and in this case DirectX kind of do the same thing, right? You render to texture, and in the end, uh, it just flip that texture on, on your screen, basically, right? So that, that's what it's going to hold. So we created two functions. Just to make things a little bit more clean, I could have just added the new code here. It's just I think it's going to get ugly. We want to separate things a little bit. All right, so we're going to put that part in the create device. We're going to call it, and then we're going to call the other one. All right, so it's just initialization function. Uh, all right, so now that we did this, we want to do the actual work to, to go get this. So we need to, so so you're not says that this is a render target view. So uh, there's always two parts to the texture. There's actually the texture and there's the view. The view is what you actually bind to the device and stuff. But first we need to go get the texture. Then we go get the view inside that texture. So interface direct 3D 11 texture 2D. All right. Those that did uh, uh, XNA before, you already know what texture 2D is. This is what it is. You just get all that, that stuff in front of it, basically. All right. And that's going to be our back button that I explained in the previous tutorial. <clears throat> and we're going to get this from our swap chain, right? So we can do get buffer. And basically the first parameter is the index. So remember that we, we can have multiple uh, buffering. Uh, in our case, we only have one, one back buffer and one front buffer. So it's double buffering basically. So we want the, the first one, which is at index zero. Then the, the next parameter is basically uh, they, they want to know the ID of the class and this is very like Microsoft compiler specific stuff. So I'm just write it and you know don't don't ever do that again. All right, just this is just for DirectX stuff. So underscore underscore UUID of and then you want to put this one. So they want to know which type it's going to be. So this is basically going to return the type of this in, in a way that the function is going to understand it. But just ignore it. 
basically that that's going to be easier <laughs> and so they're going to fill your pointer so you pass a pointer of it pointer of a pointer so remember uh, so now it's going you're going to have to cast this right so it's accepting actually a, it's a void pointer pointer and this is not a void this is a, a texture to the pointer pointer so uh, cast is something familiar to C sharp also. All right, so you just cast it in front like that, and see the error disappeared. It's perfectly fine. Uh, if you've done only Unity, you might not have done a lot of things like that. Maybe you've done simpler cast, like from integers to float, but it's the same principle, right? This line is pretty pretty hard to understand. There, there's more core concept to it, but. Uh, yeah, just remember that this is how you get the buffer from from the swap chain basically and then we're going to create a new view that's going to attach to this so remember that to create new resource it's the device and to actually bind those resource to the rendering it's going to be the device concept uh, context All right, so create render target view, all right? The function is there, convenient. All right, so from which resource we want to bind a view from the back buffer that we just got here. Uh, the next parameter you, you just want to put null there <clears throat> is if you want to bind an extra uh, description to it, just ignore this. Uh, and then the next parameter is basically a pointer of pointer again on this guy So give him the address of this and it's going to fill that that pointer with the result All right, and Yeah, after this you since we're done with this guy, we're going to release it Right so because every time we we kind of get a buffer from something uh, they will increment uh, its instance count and you have to release it, it's just going to decrement its instant count. Uh, you, you might not have to do this here because this is kind of the main buffer and it will get destroyed when the application gets destroyed and not before. So it doesn't really matter in this case, but just, just to be clean, you know, always clear the buffers you're getting. So we're just going to make sure this runs, you know, and it doesn't crash. It doesn't seem to crash, so that's perfect. Let's put a breakpoint here, just to make sure. You can see it, it actually created something. There's an address there. Uh, no, don't, don't try to see what's inside. It's, it's just like gibberish. Uh, but yeah. All right, so this piece of code is working. Now we kind of want to every frame uh, clear it. So remember our main loop. So we're going to have update calls there eventually. And here we're going to draw the stuff. So what we want to do in our case, uh, we're going to create uh, two functions from the renderer, right? So the first one is going to be begin frame. So it's going to clear the frame with a new color and fresh to start. And then there's going to be end frame. And this one is going to swap the buffer. You know, we, we talked about a lot about uh, swapping in the last tutorial. So you need to do that every frame. All right, so let's call this function right away before implementing them, so we don't forget. Begin friend, uh, frame, render all your stuff. All right, so basically your your characters will tear in whatever. Okay, and after that, we're going to end frames, and it's going to put that on on the screen. All right simple enough let's let's implement those two function uh -huh. so we're going to start by implementing the the end frame which is the simplest one and we can see a result right away so remember what we said about the swap chain we can we can swap it you know we want to present the the picture to the user well that's exactly what it's called present okay you want to put one and zero. So the, the second one is the flags, we don't care. And the first one, it's basically the interval. So uh, depending on how you set up your vSync and your NVIDIA control panel, 
Uh, mine is vsync on and my refresh rate of my monitor is 60 hertz. So by putting one there, it's going to be vsync basically. If you put two, it's going to render at two frame, uh, 30 frames per second. You know, if you're like Ubisoft something, you put two there. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's not really how it works actually. You might want to always put one there and end all your frame rate somewhere else, but and also, I think if you disable vSync in your uh, NVIDIA control panel, this is not going to do anything. Uh, just just put always one there for now. Uh, let's put a little comment. We swap the buffer. All right, so we can test this right away and you'll notice something. It is, it is now black. Wow. So that's because it's actually, uh, it's actually now presenting me the, the back buffer in the background, which is, which is just black because we never really drew anything on it. So we know that this code actually works. So that's fantastic. Uh, now we want to clear the, uh, you know, this guy, we want to clear it uh, uh, <clears throat> with a certain color. So let's do this, set the background color. All right, so we're going to declare a float array of which color we want to clear it. Remember how we were declaring arrays and it's basically RGBA. Okay, so float from 0 to 1. Uh, so I'm going to put 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1 and 1. So this will give us the typical XNA uh, cornflower blue color, kind of. And then we want to apply this. So remember that when we're actually doing rendering, we use the device context. So we use the device when we create resources, like we did there, we created a target view. And now we uh, we want to render stuff on it, so we use the device context. And what we want to do is clear render target view. All right, so you can just pass your render target view here, and your clear color. All right, let's try this. And here's your cornflower blue. It works. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, I'm just wondering, so. I think you can actually just pass that there directly. No, it's not going to work. Yeah, that's right. All right, so see, we, we just added this much code, this tutorial. It's not that big, but like we, we've cleaned up things a little bit. And now we're actually really set up to have a main loop. Like we can render stuff here and we're actually clearing the back buffer and it works. And if you want just to make a test, you know, we can do a, a random, uh, random color to so you can see it, it's actually you know updating every frame so let's say the red color and I want to go get a random all right so this is how you do random in C++ uh, sorry that's more of a C function there's actually new random function in C++ 11 we will might we might see them further to tutorial but basically this will just give me a random integer and I want to modulo it between uh, 0 and 255 and let's cast that in float and divide by 5.5. So you don't have to do this. I'm, I'm just you know, showing you that the screen is actually updating, as you can see. So this probably runs at 63 FPS in, in my case here. All right, pretty cool. So now things are getting exciting. The next one, we're going to create a vertex buffer. So we're not going to see a triangle until the next three tutorials. Uh, I said a single, I said a triangle. So we need to create a vertex buffer to all the data for the triangle. Then we need to actually create and associate vertex and pixel shaders to it. We need to go through this, unfortunately. And then at, in the end, we need to specify the layout that will bind the vertex buffer to the, to the vertex shaders and define the viewport so we can actually, uh, you know, view stuff on, on, the, on the screen. So. Let's jump into the next tutorial, which is Vertex Buffer. Thanks for watching.